Hello and welcome, it's Chris from Christopher Hold Training. Welcome to this week's tutorial. The topic is core strength and we're going to be asking the question, what is core strength and why is it important? Now, put simply, it's your foundation and what it's doing is it's giving you a healthy spine, it's giving you a healthy uh, foundation to move from. So what we want to be doing is we want to be doing this correctly because so many people get core strengthening incorrect and they don't actually build uh, core strength they get strong muscles but they don't necessarily build core strength so that's what we're going to be talking about today so what we're going to be doing obviously the aim of this is to understand core strength and its importance and there's four things that we're going to cover first of all we're going to define core strength and we're going to a bit of a technicality but we're going to explain what core strength is we're going to look at some simple anatomy which will, in a sense, help us understand the exercises for core strength and then how to do them. And then we're going to look, quickly talk about five reasons why it's important. So that's our topic for today. Before we get into it, I just quickly want to mention my social platforms. So you can come along, like and follow. It'd be great to have you there. Also, subscribe to this video. Put any comments in the comments section if you do have questions or comments about the video. Um, but on Twitter, you can come to at Christopher Hole. On Facebook, you can come to Christopher Hole Training. And on Instagram, you can come to Christopher Hole. I'm sharing more information like this throughout all three of these uh, social platforms. Alternatively, if you are looking for something a little bit more comprehensive, you can come to the website, which is ChristopherHoltraining.com. If you if you follow this link here, you'll go through to the to the free download, which is the four best core exercises. Now, this is a you could say like a micro workout, so it's four of the best core exercises that give you the best bang for your buck with regards to building um, building your core. And what you can do is you can structure it in a micro little workout and then what you receive five days later is a little video uh, tutorial. So you get one follow-up video after five days that will help you get more from uh, the exercises and then you'll get another video another five days later, so in total ten days later, which will help you um, in a sense get more from the little micro workout. So it might give you some ideas of what you can add to the workout. So what you're what you're then doing is building something that you can actually start doing uh, from day one. So yeah, please do come along there. It'd be great to have you there. Um, alternatively, again, come to social media, uh, like and follow. It'd be great to have you there. Subscribe to this channel. Comments in the uh, in the comments box below. It'd be great to hear from you. So. Uh, back to what we're talking about, and that is core strength. What is it, and why is it important? In slide number one, we're going to tackle the first two points, which is the definition, which is over here, and then we're going to look at core anatomy over here. So first, the definition. Now, as I mentioned, it's a bit of a technicality, but what we're actually building is core endurance here. Now, again, as I mentioned, I use the core strength term because most people recognize it. But what they're actually doing is they're building building endurance within their core. Because when we look at strength, it's the maximum force produced by a muscle or group of muscles. So if you can imagine putting a lot of weight on a barbell, for example. So a barbell is a big, long um, bar, which you put a lot of weight on, and then you might put it on your back and do a squat exercise. So what we would do is we would put a lot of weight on, and then we might just do one or two reps of that. So that would be our max strength. So that is the maximum force that these muscles can produce. So that's the maximum force that the leg muscles can produce in one or two lifts. Now, that doesn't really happen within the core. What happens within the core is submaximal force over an extended period of time. So what we're, what we're thinking about is when we're at the gym. So that would be one. Then we're at home. Then we're at work. Then we might be doing a sport, so on and so forth. But we've got these three scenarios in which we want our core to be working effectively. Because if it's not, we leave ourselves open to things like lower back pain, posture problems, uh, aches and pains within our hips and shoulders and neck and things like that. So we want our core to be working over an extended period of time. So the, th the thing that we want to focus on is, again, it's not necessarily the, the terminology. So if you see core strength, what you really want to be thinking 
is core endurance. Whenever you hear me say core strength, what I really mean is core endurance. But again, the reason I use core strength within any videos that I do is because that's what people recognize. Hence why this is called core strength. It's not necessarily, it's more core endurance. But now I'm explaining what core endurance is. Hopefully you've got a better understanding of it. So that is essentially the definition. So what we're looking for is core endurance, not necessarily core strength but don't get too hung up on um, you know what I'm saying it's just a case of, of definition the second point is our cause anatomy now this helps us understand what exercises to do and how we need to do them so what we've got is this image here so you can see obviously this image what you might not be able to read are the names and the terms either side of it. Now, that's not necessarily what I want you to be able to read. What I want you to get from this is that the core, which is essentially all of this area here, and then you can come down here again, so we'll go around the shoulder, down the side. So essentially, that is our core, all of that area there. So we know that's our core. And what we've got, we've got a lot of muscles here. We've got the rectus abdominis in the middle. You've also got one this side, which would go like that. You've then got the sort of external obliques, serratus anterior up in here. You've also got the internal obliques, which is a layer down, because if you can see here, they've sort of lifted a layer, and then they've lifted another layer here as well. So you've got internal obliques, you've also got transverse abdominis. If we were to flip this round and we were looking at his back, what we would also see is QL, which is a muscle on either side of the spine that buttresses the spine and stops it from buckling. You've also got erector spinae that goes all the way up. Erector spinae goes all the way up both sides of the spine. You can just about see it on here, but you've got lats at the side. In some respects, you've got the lower to middle traps, which kind of goes out to here and then up into the upper traps. So you've got the mid to low traps going out up into the upper traps on either side. So essentially, we've got a lot of muscles working in that small area. They all run in different directions as well is another key thing. So what's that telling us? Well, the first thing it's telling us is what we want to be doing is we want to be training the whole. So we want our exercises to really be focusing on the whole of this. And certainly to start with, we want to be doing static exercises. Now the reason we do the static exercises is because the core, in a sense, is there to prevent movement. So that's its, in a sense, that's its primary function. That doesn't mean the spine can't move and the, the core can't move, because it can. But its primary function is to prevent movement. So when the, the legs are creating a lot of force using their strength, what we want is the core to hold that in position. And then when we go on to the next exercise, and we might do a lift with the arms, what we want is the core to be able to hold that position. So it does have a degree of strength, but we want it to work over a period of time. So it's there to prevent movement, or its primary function is to prevent movement. So we're focusing on exercises because the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That's how we talk about the core. So we want to train the whole of it. We want to start also with static exercises and then move into dynamic exercises. So that would then be the next thing we would move into. So what we're starting to understand is how to, first of all, use the core and then the types of exercises that use the core in that way, if that makes sense. So that's what we're going to do now is we're going to go on to the next slide and talk about some of those exercises. The first key thing to understand from this slide and core endurance exercises is it's not necessarily what you do it's how you do them. So where I'm talking about the plank in this exercise and the side plank in this exercise, a lot of people think, well, yeah, I can do that. I can hold that position for five minutes. I've got great core endurance or core strength. But what we want to be focusing on is not 
necessarily what we're doing, i.e. the exercise, but it's how we're doing them. So we want to do little sort of inventory checks around our body to make sure we're doing the right thing at the right time. So obviously you can see here, I've got my elbows directly below my shoulders. That's minimizing the stress on the shoulder and keeping it on the torso. I've got relatively a straight line through my ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder. Yes, I've got my hips slightly up. I always say to people, bring your hips slightly up because as you fatigue, you'll tend to collapse. So if you've got them slightly up, you'll be able to, to manage that fatigue a little bit better when you drop straight down into position. So that would be sort of the first thing. So with regards to point number one, which is how we do them, is don't completely fatigue. So we want, our, we want to build core endurance. So again, if we completely fatigue, what we're doing is we're leaving home and work vulnerable to lower back pain, muscle fatigue, aches and pains, poor posture, so on and so forth. But if we don't completely fatigue, then we really start to build our endurance because we're using it throughout the day, but also keeping a healthy spine. So in some ways, it's a bit of a double-edged sword in that we reduce our risk of injury, but we also enhance our performance. What it means for exercise is we carry out the sets in intervals. So instead of just holding these postures and positions for, say, 60 seconds or 90 seconds, what we might do is we do four times 10 seconds. Excuse my writing. So we might just do four times 10 seconds with a little five second sort of, let's just call it rest in between. And then we would repeat that. That would be one set and then we repeat it for set two and set three. The next thing to focus on is bracing. So we want to brace, not hollow. Hollow is where you suck your uh, navel towards your spine, which although it's said to be core stabilizing or spine stabilizing, it's not really. Bracing is core stabilizing and spine stabilizing. So we want to pull, as I mentioned before, we want to pull the abdominals in. We want to pull the obliques in on both sides. We also want to be pulling the, or certainly on this side anyway, the shoulders down, which activates the lats. And to some degree, we want to pull the shoulders back, not completely, but just a little, to activate traps on the back and rhomboids in between the shoulder blades here. We could also squeeze glutes. So that will then support from uh, below. So we've got the glutes on there. So we've got glutes, rhomboids, traps, abdominals and obliques so we've got muscles from below muscles from sort of above and behind and then muscles from in front and to the side so we're building a much more solid platform for our body to be able to um to hold itself then what we do as i mentioned before make exercises dynamic which brings us to these two exercises down the bottom now this is a reverse chop where i move this resistance band from a low position up to a high position and then I've got this swinging exercise where I rotate and most importantly I rotate on my hips so I don't rotate my spine I rotate my hips and I keep a position so it's the same here so I'm rotating on this front hip here this leg stays planted and this rotates so I rotate around like so so I'm rotating around and lifting but I'm rotating on the hip maintaining a proper position of the spine. Same here. This is a little bit more dynamic and a little bit has a little bit more velocity because what I'm doing is I'm swinging this kettlebell from side to side. So I swing that back and forth and rotate on each of the hips. So again, this leg stays planted when it's the front leg and this leg rotates. And then when I swing the other way, this leg stays static and this leg rotates. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my core muscles are preventing any movement of the torso while my limbs are producing the movement and creating the movement. Number five, I've already mentioned, but we maintain proper position of the spine. And then six, as again I've mentioned, we move from the hips and from the shoulders. So what we want to be focusing on 
is core in, is core endurance, which is different to core strength, but also core stability as well. Because when we talk about core stability, what we're focusing on is more about one, which is balance. And two, which is timing. So when are the muscles turning on and when are they turning off? With core endurance, we're just focusing on holding. So we're just holding them on all the time. Whereas core stability is more about balance and timing. So what we're going to do now is why is all of this, why is everything that I've talked about just now, why is that important? So we're going to look at that in the next slide. We've talked about these four exercises. So you've got the plank, the side plank, you've got reverse chop, and you've got what's called an atlas swing with a kettlebell here. So we've talked about how we go from static into dynamic. We've talked about how we maintain a uh, proper position of the spine by using our bracing technique. And we also talked about how we move from the hips and from the shoulders when we are doing these exercises. Now, why is that important? Well, number one, it protects your spine, which in some degree is probably the most important set of joints in your body. You can live without a toe. You could probably live without an ankle. You could probably live without a knee and a hip, but you can't live without a spine. It's very important to maintain your spine and keep a healthy spine. So doing these types of exercises will help protect your spine as long as you do them well. It also helps you maintain a better posture. If you're doing exercises like sit-ups, crunches, back extensions, twists and bends and all those different types of things and using machines and focusing on muscles rather than movements, you're going to eventually create imbalance you're going to get one muscle that's overactive and one muscle that's underactive, which again is going to cause more of a problem in the long run. Number three, you get more margin for error in everyday tasks. Now, you're not going to have perfect posture 24-7. You're not going to be lifting correctly 24-7. You're not going to be carrying, pushing, pulling, walking, all these different types of things perfectly for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So what doing these types of exercises help with, they allow you to come out of those perfect or good or better postures for longer because you get a more margin of error. Number four, allows you more movement at the spine. So what this then allows you to do, we talked about margin for error. So when we go into things like a golf swing, for example, or if we've got to reach across a desk and move our spine. Again, when we've got that greater margin for error, we're then allowed greater movement from the spine because a lot of, let's just say, injury or damage or disorder is improper movement and use of the spine. So what we can do is we can build a greater margin of error, which allows us better movement from the spine and then we get or we reduce our risk of injury because we are, again, having that greater margin of error. And then number five, as I've sort of alluded to before, it keeps muscle balance. So the muscles at the front and the muscles at the back have a better balance. Muscle from right to left has a better balance. So what we're able to do is maintain better balance throughout the core because there isn't necessarily a um, let's just call them a prime mover so when I go to straighten my leg the quad here is the prime mover it's that muscle that's creating that movement within the core there aren't necessarily those types of muscles they all work together as one unit to hold your core in position and what we then do is we then move and use the limbs. So in that respect, core muscles are very different from, let's just call them limb muscles. Limb muscles create movement, core muscles prevent movement. And that's how we want to start thinking. So we want to start using exercises like these in a way that I've described to build our core endurance so we can have a healthier spine, we can have better posture and we can have better muscle balance so we reduce risk of injury and give ourselves the 
the, the probability and ability to enhance our performance in the long term. So many thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. As I mentioned before, please do come on to social media. Please do like and subscribe uh, to this channel. It'd be great to have you here. Alternatively, come along to the website, download the micro workout, get the four best exercises for core strength and stability. And I look forward to uh, speaking to you in the next video and in the future. Many thanks for watching. My name is Chris. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye.